Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word.
presence of God here. Come on, somebody just welcome the Prince of God here. Thank Him because He's here.
exalt your name. Rising up from the ashes, God forever you reign. And my soul will find refuge in the shadow of your wings. I will love you forever and forever. Can't let the ruins come to life. The ruins come to life. delivered tonight the weak are strengthened tonight the desperate get an answer tonight those with questions receive answers tonight come on speak upon yourself and say tonight I receive an answer tonight things come to life tonight things come to life Tonight things come to life. 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 Come on, take a moment and speak to things. Everything that looks dead. I want you to speak to it tonight and say tonight things come to life. Tonight everything comes to life. Tonight whatever means strongly we dies and life comes out tonight. Tonight ruins come to life. Tonight things come to life. Come on, give life to your children. Give life to your children. Give life to your 
family. Give life to your relationship. Give life to your ministry. Give life. Give life. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Make your report tonight by the word of God. Say something. Say something. Say something. I speak light on my ministry. I speak light on my body. I speak light. I speak light. Light. Come on, speak light. 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 Prendere le le cosa. Satare le bo. Bracatele. Prosimando rica se pele. Si te le 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 le. Sabotire ba. Prodere cosa ta. Savele. Rico sabatele. Send light. Speak light. Speak light. Speak light. Speak light. Satare. Sabababa ko. Prakatote. Sando rico. Sarele. Rico sarele ko. Sabro kosima. Robo bobo bo. I cannot fail. I will never fail. I don't fail. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says I was once young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous for second. Neither they are seen begging bread. I cannot be forsaken. The Bible says they that trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. The Bible says the righteous shall not be put to shame. Things are working for you. They must work for you. They must work for your family. They must work for your marriage. They must work for your ministry. They must work. They must work. They must work. Jesus, 
Shatalai, Terere Rebos, Sandori Basai. You may be seated. Something has happened. Something just happened. I feel it. Something just happened. Something just happened. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Something just happened. Put her down. Just put her down. If she. <laughs> Something just happened. 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 I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. When a man gets an answer, I know it. Somebody has received an answer. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I was not meant to fail. It's not in my nature to fail. Wow. 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 We want to thank God for last week. Pastor Zach blessed us. Even us which live streamed. We were slain on the screen. <laughs> of course, there was a swollen jaw. I think there was a word, as the word was being preached, somebody came with a swollen jaw and it started to go back last week in the meeting. So by the end of service, Israel had a fresh jaw. Praise the Lord. And I see um, there was a bad stomach infection that was healed. Beatrice was also healed of a headache that had been constant for three months non-stop. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody got a big job here. I also don't know who. I won't mention her name. You'll be looking for her. Praise God. We also thank God for what happened. We, were, we, we, we went to New Jersey. And um, we had uh, more than a thousand ministers, pastors, Evangelist teachers, the fivefold ministry from 73 countries. It was powerful. Praise God. The sick were healed. We got one guy out of a wheelchair immediately and he walked. It was beautiful. Some of you live streamed. And um, they are blessed and they want us again. So we will go there again. Praise God. We also had our first school of ministry for the diaspora group. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we enjoyed the whole week of teaching. I was teaching every day for six hours. Yeah. Six hours, not less than that. Six hours. And of course we engaged demonstration and prophecy. So sometimes we'd push into extra hours but they were blessed and they send their regards praise god hallelujah i want to recognize all the men and women of god here the pastors of fanero the pastors from mukono i've seen a number of you bishop i've seen a wonderful man of god from barara you're welcome uh i, I have seen many oh man of god it's wonderful to see you all the men and women of god the man of god peter matov has been outside countries he came back yesterday, I think. Yeah. You're welcome. I had, we had good news of what the Lord did through you. Praise God. This word works. Tell your neighbor, this word works. Tell them again, this word works. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, from the first verse. If you're there, you say amen. Hebrews chapter 4, from the first verse. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Praise the Lord. For we which have believed, the Bible says, do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Somebody say amen. Give me the message version of that. The message says, if we believe, comma, though we will experience, sorry, if we believe, though, we will experience that state of resting. But not if we don't have faith. Remember that God said, exasperated, I vowed they'll never get where they are going, never be able to sit down and rest. God made that vow, even though he'd finished his part before the foundation of the world. And the Bible says in the next verse, somewhere it is written, God rested the seventh day, having completed his work. Hallelujah. But in the other text he says, they'll never be able to sit down and rest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible speaks of people to whom the gospel was preached to. Like us. But the Bible says, but faith was not added. They did not receive that word with faith. And because they did not receive that word with faith, what happened? They did not enter into what God has promised upon their lives. Now that seems like an obvious scripture because I think some of you have read it since you were five. But I'm going to show you a few things there that are not common. Give me the Amplified of the same. Hebrews chapter 1 again, chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 4. He says, therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, he says, let us be afraid to distrust it. Did you hear that? So the warning really is, let us be afraid to distrust the promise of entering into his rest. Let us be afraid to distrust the promise of entering into his rest. Let us be afraid to distrust. In other words, it's possible for a man to distrust. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how people distrust without them knowing that they're distrusting. Praise the Lord. Least any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of preaching it. Of reaching it, sorry. For indeed we have heard the glad tidings of God proclaimed as just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the old news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they had did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith, with the leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom and goodness by those who had it. Neither were they, were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua, Caleb, who had it and did believe. Praise the Lord. They did not believe it, neither were they united with those who believed. And let me begin with that a bit. Do you know certain things can work for you because you attach yourself with people who have faith? You understand what I'm saying? God says, you know, it's, it's, it's bad that you don't believe. But it's even worse that you don't surround yourself around crazy people. Praise the Lord Jesus. Did you read that? He says, neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who had and did believe. You understand what I'm saying? At least be one with the person who is crazy. Just be one with them. Be around them. Be around crazy people. Be around people who have faith. And faith that works. Not excitement. (laughs) You know, I've been around people who say, I have faith, I have faith. But they don't have works. They don't have results. And I mean they don't have results. (laughs) But they proclaim to have what? Faith. Somebody say amen. Amen. And the Bible says, but it is possible to walk out of this and not have results as an individual. And somebody said, how come? I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I know many of us, if not a big number of us, I mean all of us, have heard of some the gift of righteousness, haven't you? But the Lord long ago spoke to me about something called how the, the, righteousness, the, the righteousness of faith speaks. 
You understand what I'm saying? Remember how he says in Romans 10 verse 6, The righteousness of faith speaks this wise. Praise the Lord Jesus. The righteousness of faith speaks this wise. The righteousness of faith has a way it speaks. And a man who understands truth can easily sense the righteousness of faith and how he speaks. The righteousness of faith. That's the righteousness of God. That is the righteousness which you have obtained through faith. The righteousness which you have obtained through faith has a way it speaks. But many people don't know how to catch the lines of that righteousness and how that righteousness speaks. Praise the Lord Jesus. And because many people don't know how that righteousness speaks, they don't get the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and the word of God which is the righteousness of faith. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you believe it? So if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, it is the kind of thing that you hear that determines how you walk in the spirit and how you walk in the things of God. Agreed? But when people read their Bibles, many of them cannot connect how the righteousness of faith speaks. And therefore they cannot get the blessing of the voice and the co- or the communication of the righteousness of faith. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense? There is a way the righteousness of faith speaks. The Bible says that I'm not afraid of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the what? The power of God unto what? Salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Next verse. For therein, the Bible says, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Therein. Paul explains why it is the power of God unto salvation both to the Jew and the Greek. Why? Because therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. In other words, when you get the righteousness of God, the righteousness of faith, the revelation of the righteousness of God through faith, the Bible says your gospel will have power. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Your ministry will have power. Your life, your life will move in a certain glory. Why? Because you have gotten the revelation of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Because they are in. Because they are in. Because they are in. Because they are in. Therein is the righteousness of God what? Revealed. For therein. For therein means because of. Give me the amplified of the same. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and a firm reliance to the Jew first also to the Greek. And I love the way the, the Amplified does it. Because when you go to the Amplified, you realize the end there is a comma, meaning it's a continuation, right? The, it's, it's not yet full. He says, for in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, but springing, listen, from faith and leading to faith. It springs from faith and leads into faith. I don't know that some of you understand what I'm saying. You know some of you are used to... <laughs> Today we are walking around Jericho. You don't even know what you're walking. You don't even know what... what? You've built walls that were broken by God. <laughs> Today, what, what is that wall? The wall of poverty. The wall of what? Walk around it. Let it break. And people have walked around and walked around and walked around and walked around and Jericho has refused to fall. Jericho is just being rebuilt. The more they walk around Jericho, the more it goes up and up. The more they are praying, the more the things worsen. The more they believe God, the more things worsen. The more they walk in faith, the more things fall. Why? Because they ignore the teaching of the gospel. Praise the Lord Jesus. A hundred percent of the Christian problems in the body of Christ stem from knowledge. Not generational cancers of your uncle and your auntie. He says you will know the truth 
and the truth will make you free. He didn't say you'll know the demons of your auntie and who bewitched you. No. He says you will know the truth and the truth will what? Make you free. Praise the Lord Jesus. He has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the what? Through the knowledge of Him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of Him that has, he, we have been. Through the knowledge of Him we have been. Through the knowledge of Him we have been. Through the knowledge of Him we have been given. Blessed. Through the knowledge of Him. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge. As you know Him, you have been given. Not you will be given. You have been given. In other words, the primary realization of the New Testament life is the day-to-day -day continuous knowledge that you have, not that you will have. <laughs> the righteousness of faith speaks this way. Some of you, what you're in is not faith. It's not the righteousness of God. It's not the righteousness of faith. You have, you, have, you have put everything in your life as something to come. You have put every blessing ahead. You have put everything as though it has not yet happened. Yet according to God, the righteousness of faith speaks this way. Speaks this way. That's how the righteousness... You remember when Paul is speaking about um, for all things in Christ are yea and amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verses 19. He says, But as go, for the Son of God, Jesus, who has preached among you by us, the one we preached, eh? me, Silvanus, Timotheus, if we are talking about the Jesus we preached, there was not yea and nay. But the Bible says, but in him was yea. I don't know how you get it. Simply translated. The God that me, Paul speaks, Timothy and Silvana spoke about, in him everything was yes. There was never no. There was never no. There was never no. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Give me the message of that. He says, for while well, Silas and Timothy and I proclaim the Son of God among you, did you pick out any yes and no? On again, he says, off again, waffling. Wasn't it a clean, strong yes? I want a job, yes. I want money, yes. I, I, <laughs> marriage, yes. I want my ministry to grow, yes. I want it bigger. Like, I have to succeed in life. I, everything has to, this deal has to go through. He said, we never had a waffling of off and again. Today God is going to bless you. Tomorrow is not going to bless you. Next week God is going to work for you. Last week is not going to work for you. Maybe he's thinking about it. Maybe God... No, 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 no. In him was... Yeah! That's how the righteousness of faith speaks. He says, we never spoke about a no and yes and no and yes. Why is it in your language? Why is it in your language? Some of you feel you deserve certain things. Some of you feel you don't deserve certain things. Some of you think some things are for you. Some of you think, ah, some things are not for me. Some of you think, ah, no, today this time it's going to work. Then say, ah, I think I didn't fast. It's not going to work tomorrow. Why? Because I didn't pray. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. The next verse, let's continue with the message. He says, next verse, whatever God has promised gets stamped with yes of Jesus. Whatever. And the Bible says, in him, this is what we preach and that is what we pray. Did you hear that? It's what I am supposed to preach to you. It's the same way you're supposed to pray. I hear Christians who don't understand the righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith. They go to God and they say, Father, if it is your will, let it work. If it is not your will, let it not work. You know, one time I found a dear Catholic woman I like very much. Very old lady. She says, there is no greater prayer in life like telling God, do what you will. 
And I could sense in my spirit, much as she was, she was true to that level, she didn't have the revelation of what it means. Exactly. That scripture, what it means. Let your will be done. You know, we can only pray. That's what many Christians say. That's why you don't get things. That's why you don't get answers. Because some of you can only pray and wait for his will to prevail. If it's the will of God for me to get a job, I'll get it. If it's not... <laughs> Let me tell you. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to say a few hard things in a few minutes, but bear with me because I need some of you to be delivered once and for all. There is no such thing in the promises of God as nay. There is nothing God promised in your life and you're not supposed to have. It's not there. And the promises of God are not for a few people, special people, who know how to pray and fast. Whether you know how to pray or fast, all the prom- that's what we preach. And that is how we pray. A man who understands that every promise is yours, you don't go to God asking for it. You go to God thanking. That's how you pray. That's how you're supposed to teach. And that's how you're supposed to pray. You're supposed to pray like everything is here. I mean, if, if I'm asking for something that is not going to be denied because it's already mine, how am I supposed to pray? Am I supposed to pray like I'm asking for something that there's a possibility of receiving or not? Some people misplace faith. Faith is not believing you will have. Faith is believing you have. <laughs> Woo! Faith, let us have faith that God will heal. Ah, that, you, that's gone. That person is gone. That person is gone. Let us believe God that he will do something. The moment you say that, will, I will. He, the, you remember the man who came to him? If you will, you shall make me whole. You shall make me whole. And Jesus told the man, I will. It's no longer about his will. The Bible says the blessed assurance of every Christian. He has made known unto us the mystery of his will. But what if I don't know his will? No, he has made known. What if I don't know? Apostle, for example, me, I might not know whether that is my wife or she's not. You, you know. But I don't know. But you know. No, but I don't know. Uh, uh. He has made known to you. Listen. Everything. You know all things. You have an action from on high. You know all things. No, I don't know. No, I, you know. I don't know. I said you know. Why? Because God said you know. Not because you know. But because God said you know. <laughs> and let God be true. So that's how you pray. That's how you pray. That's how you talk. You don't say, ha ha, I don't know who I will marry. No. You say, I know. <laughs> you just convince yourself that you know. It, it springs from faith into faith. Praise the Lord Jesus. You don't, you, do, you see, that's why many Christians are the righteousness of faith teaches you to, to, to say things that your neighbor can hear and walk away. I don't want to say things that my economy can explain. I don't want to say things that my paycheck can explain. I don't want to say things that Uganda can explain. I don't want to say things that a third world country can explain. I don't want to say things that a man who understands English can explain. No. I want to say something and offend someone. Why? Because it is too big. That's how the righteousness of faith speaks. Learn to boast around people. Learn to boast around. Learn to boast around. Somebody say amen. Learn to what? To bust around. If you're a shy person like some people I know, look for an animal, look for a cat around and start telling it hello. You're looking at the most anointed man of God. The richest there is in Africa. Hallelujah. That's how the righteousness of faith speaks.
everything I do, it doesn't work, Apostle. Why? Why? I tell him, you don't have faith. You don't have faith. You see, let me tell you something. You remember what the message said in Hebrews again? You can take me there. He speaks of Hebrews, where we were, four, I think, was it four? Yeah? He says, let's go to, to, to the second verse, I think. He says, we received the same promises as those people in the wilderness. But the promises did not do them a bit of good because they didn't receive the promises. No, no, no. I think it's verse 1. He says, for as long as then, as the promise is resting, in him pulls... Thank you. For as long as... Sorry. For, sorry, for as long, comma, then, comma, as that promise of resting in him, the Bible says, pulls us unto God's goal for us. You see? That the promise, right, of resting in Him pulls us to God's goal for us. We need to be careful that we are not disqualified. We need to be careful that we are not disqualified. Why? Because the promise of rest pulls us to God's goal for us. In other words, when you, when you believe, when you enter faith, there's a certain rest that comes in your life. And when that rest comes in your life, when that rest engulfs your spirit, when it garrisons your soul, Everything God has planned for you starts to work. It allows God. It allows God to work for you. It allows Him to work for you. Now, anybody who has not believed is not rested. And anybody who has believed is rested. When a man goes to God anxious, that man is not a believer. You see, I need to make it clear before I go deeper. Eh? The, when you, for example, when you become anxious about something and then you're afraid or you're fretful about something, the moment fear comes to your spirit, I want you to know you're not a believer. You understand what I'm saying? The mistake in our generation is we tell people, when people come, oh my God, oh my God, we tell them, rest, first rest. Kakana. That's not how we're supposed to be doing it. Because the man is out of rest because he has not believed. The problem is not restlessness. The problem is what? So when somebody comes, oh my God, oh my, so believe, believe, believe. <laughs> Did you get what I just said? When somebody comes with their stress factor, oh, I, I don't know, oh my God, I think they fed me. I don't know what I'm going to say, hey, sister, sister, sister. Don't walk in unbelief. Believe, believe, believe. Don't tell them, calm down. No, tell them, believe, believe. They'll calm down. For us, we want to calm them down and then cause them to believe. That is ungodly. It is false hope. The Bible says we've been begotten unto a lively hope. Lively! Praise the Lord. Sounds like a live wire. Somebody say amen. That is why every time you get in a place of anxiety, of fret, fear, worry, first ask yourself, where am I unbelieving? At what point did I distrust? That's the problem. That's the problem. Or is such where you are losing, you've lost faith from. And find your faith. That is why, for me, every time something like that comes in my life, I look for the Bible. Or I, I enter my search engine and I search something. I search out a crazy word, like power. Then it comes into my, my search engine. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we hope or even dare to ask according to the working power that worketh in us. Then I start speaking in tongues. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. That's how you pray. But some of you, the moment you receive news, you say, I, I'm dead. I'm dead. No. You have not understood the righteousness of faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christ, the righteousness which we speak and we preach. Timothy, Paul, Silvanus, Apostle Grace, Pastor Zach, Apostle Emma, list is endless. In him was ye, and there was no nay. But, but how do you reconcile that with the will of God? You know the will of God. What do you mean by reconciling? You know the will of God. How can you reconcile what you already know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4 verses 13. Give me the Amplified Bible. Romans 4 13. 
Give me the Amplified Bible. Romans chapter 4. He says, For the promise to Abraham or his posterity that he should inherit the world, comma, did not come through observing the commands of the law, but through the righteousness. Did you hear that again? It has come back of faith. Abraham did not inherit the world because he observed commandments. Do you mean that we shouldn't observe commandments? Okay, let me answer you. That is even disrespectful of you to ask a new creature that. An incorruptible creature. Because for us, our problem is not the law. Christ is the end of the law unto all that believe. Again, you're not a believer. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said, Christ is the end of the law. To everyone that believeth. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Should, should we uh, just preach about grace and just ignore our morals like that? <laughs> Let me answer you. Morals is not the problem of a new creature. Because the new creature is not patterned after the Adamic nature, which in its own is sinful. Sin is not a new creature problem. Sin is an old creature problem. Because it's a nature. The new creature is a righteous being. Sin is not your problem. Sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Sin is not a problem for a new creature. But I have a problem. Let us be real. No. Now let us be real. Let us be real. Okay. Should we follow your problem or the word of God? Who is true? Should we respect your word or what the word of God says? The word of God. If God has said sin is not your problem, don't make it your problem. In other words, if you're having a problem and you're addicted to something, in any way, I want to give you good news. You can walk out of it any time without any stress. It's not your problem. A problem is something beyond your control. This is not a problem. You can wake up and say, I've stopped lying, and that's it. And there's nothing in the world the devil can do. Why? Because all power and authority has been given. Sin is not a problem of a new creature. When I find men who say sin is a problem, I, I realize they are not either not yet born again, or they have not understood what it means to be born again. A man who is born again is born of an incorruptible seed. Underline that word, incorruptible. In that it cannot be corrupted inside there. Hallelujah. That's why I told people, a new creature can't be addicted to anything. He, but, but addiction is, is a reality. People are addicted. It's true. It's a reality they are addicted. But it's because they have not yet understood the righteousness of faith. If they do understand the righteousness of faith, they will understand that you cannot be... You cannot be... You cannot be... You can't be addicted to it. You can't. You can even choose and say, now I've stopped. And that's it. You won't even struggle with it. Because you're a new creature. The man inside there. Greater is he which is in you. Than the devil in the world. Hallelujah. It's like one time. You know people have many things twisted wrong. Eh? Many people. Like uh, some time back I was sharing with the man of God. And we were talking. And we realized. Do you know. One time I was in a meeting. Of a number of preachers. Big, big preachers across Africa. So they were different from different nations. And so we were talking about how we can evangelize Africa uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different way from the way the course has been. And I had some bishops, some of leaders of different umbrella organizations in different countries. Ivory Coast, Senegal, where... So we were talking... And so everyone was bringing their idea. And then some old fellow stood up and said, I'm not mentioning names. He stood up and said, All of you are talking, but do any of you have money? Because everything you're discussing needs money. If we've not talked about money yet, let us not discuss this. And the meeting ended. (laughs) 
And the guy said he had been in the gospel preaching for 38 years. And that's the highest revelation. If you don't have money, don't talk. You see, why do people think their problem is money? Why do people think their problem is money? Do you know many people think their problem is money? If they get money, everything leaves. <laughs> their problem. One time a certain guy came and said, Apostle Grace, do you know why your ministry is successful? He said, yeah. You have rich partners. God has blessed you with rich partners. If I had such partners, my ministry would grow. I laughed. I didn't comment. I walked away. Because I realized I needed to open from Genesis to explain to him. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, we have the richest people in Fanero and I'm not... I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about that. Are you sorry? No. Me too. You understand what I'm saying? But I realized that he thought in his head that when he gets money, his ministry will grow and everything. I said, e God, this is so sad. There are many people here who think money is their problem. Money is not a problem at all. It is not a problem. God has even refused us to labor to be rich. Cease from your wisdom. Money is not a problem. But this is what I knew for a fact. Many people like that don't want to pay the price of knowledge. They think people come because the ministry has money. They don't know that the ministry grew even before we realized certain monies. It was growing. They don't know that there are people who walk 12 kilometers to come to pray at Fanero. There's a woman who phoned me and said, my daughter walks 12 kilometers to come to pray. When she doesn't have transport, she gets 12 kilometers walking and comes to pray and walks back another 12 kilometers. There's a fellow who travels close to 400 kilometers to get here every Thursday, and he comes every Thursday. Do you understand what I'm saying? The issue is not money. The issue is God. Get God. Get God. I mean get too much of Him. Praise the Lord Jesus. His righteousness. And all these things shall be added. But the fellow thinks that the problem is from without. He thinks the problem is out. No, the problem is not out. Always the problem is within. The problem is here. Out of it flow the issues of life. Hallelujah. Many of us are walking into a future that is too bright. We need sunglasses. But let me tell you for certain. It is not because we had the right connections. It's not even because we had money. No, it is because we believed. Somebody say that's me. Say that's me. Your problem is knowledge. If you know the truth, the truth will make you free. That is the righteousness of faith. That's how it speaks. Somebody say hallelujah. Shout hallelujah again. Now, let me continue to build something here. I need to show us something before I go, I, I go a bit further. So, he says, the promise to Abraham to his... Give me Amplified. The promise to Abraham or his society that should inherit the, the world did not come through observing the commands of the Lord, but through the righteousness of faith. It's come again. If it is the adherent, sorry, if it is the, if it's the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, then faith is made futile or useless and empty of all meaning. And the promise of God is made void. It is annulled and has no power. Next verse. For the law results in divine wrath. Did you hear that? But where there is no law, there is no transgression of it either. Next verse. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith. 
and depends entirely on faith. That is so clear. You're not a success because of what you what you do. No, you're a success because you believe God. Some of you, you have self-examination moments where you look into yourself and see every bad thing you have done and every good thing. Then after that you say, aha, I think now I qualify because I've done this. You're so, you're so deceived. That is not faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the outcome is faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace that is unmerited favor to make it what stable and valid and guaranteed to all its descendants in other words you're living a stable life of everything you're stable in increase you're stable in multiplication you're stable in wisdom you're stable in intelligence you're stable in wealth you're stable in you're stable in everything you're stable in the miraculous the only way it can be stable if, if it if it comes in unmerited form that's grace. And the only way it can come by grace is when it depends entirely on faith. And its outcome is entirely of faith. Why is it so hard for you to believe? So, that means we have to do nothing. No, one thing, believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you mean we can do anything bad and then we get good, you see? That's again your problem. Why are you even meditating to do bad? A new creature can't meditate to do bad. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. That is how the righteousness of faith speaks. That's the righteousness of faith. That's what makes faith righteous too. In Isaiah 32, 15, he says something. He says, until the Spirit is poured upon us. This is Isaiah 32. He says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. The Bible says, and the wilderness be a fruitful field. Why? Why? Why is it a fruitful field? Why is it a fruitful field? Because the Spirit is poured out on you. And your wilderness becomes a what? Of anything. Business, financial, ministry, anything you want. And the Bible says, and the fruitful field will be counted for a forest. In other words, there is a guarantee that whatever you plant has to become a forest. Somebody say amen. amen. That is how the righteousness of faith says. That is how the righteousness of faith speaks. Everything you touch will be increased. It will be increased. If you start business, I promise you, it will increase until it's until you're, you're tired of it increasing. If you start a ministry, it will increase until you get tired of it increasing. If you start anything, anything you put your hand on, it shall be fruitful. And from fruitful, it will transition into what? A forest. If, that's what I know about myself. Everything I touch, you can also claim it. That's your problem if you don't believe it. That's what I believe for myself. Everything that I believe God for and I touch, it must increase. And look at the miracle. Fruitful in the wilderness. Make it your WhatsApp status for two days. Even in the wilderness, you're fruitful. Even in the wilderness, you're fruitful. Our fathers walked in the desert, like everybody else. Abraham, Moses, Paul, even the Lord Jesus. But whatever they went through in the wilderness, it was, they were still fruitful there. <laughs> Even in Canaan, <laughs> Abraham still was great. He was still rich. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus in 40 years, in the 40, day, sorry, 40 days in the wilderness, he was still supplied. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the next verse says, and he says, then, the Bible says, judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. You see how the judgments of God reconcile in the coma. And righteousness remains in the fruit field. That means it's not a righteousness that comes and goes back. No, it stays constantly. The righteousness of God, it stays in the field. Hallelujah. And the next verse says, and the work of righteousness, that work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. 
and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. You didn't get what I just said. You didn't get what I just said. Give me the amplified of that. Of that. He says the work of righteousness, the work, the effect of righteousness will be peace internal and external. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust. When a man understands righteousness of faith, you have an assurance. You know how we used to sing back in the day? Blessed assurance, Jesus is my... You know he's yours. You know success is yours. You know increase is yours. I don't care how long it has, failed, it, it, it has delayed. Hallelujah. It's, do you know, haven't you asked yourself why some of you look at delay in your life, but you still believe? There is an assurance inside you that tells you every morning whether it takes rain or fire, whether sunshine, bring all elements together. I will still see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see. Because it's already ordained for me. It's just waiting for the manifestation in the flesh. It is ordained for me to be a success. Tell somebody I had to be a success. It is too late. Don't you even think about it. It is too late to fail. Unless you don't believe. But the moment you open your mouth and say, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And this I will preach to you as long as the Lord gives me breath and you open your ears to listen to me. I will tell you always because that's what the Bible says. It is finished. Hear it, let it sink. He says, the work of righteousness. Give me the KJV will be peace. And the Bible says, that is, that is, when you find a man at peace, you understand righteousness has worked in him. People who understand these things are not restless. Me, I don't worry what I'll eat. I, 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 I don't worry. I don't worry. I don't worry. I refuse to worry. Even if, let me tell you, even if you're going through the worst situation possible, let righteousness have its work in you. Refuse to worry. Some of you wake up at night, 2 a.m. in the morning. Then you start worrying. 3. Worrying. You look at your wife and she's not. Oh. Then you say, oh God. Then you worry. Then you hear your kid changing, I mean, uh, turning. Oh. Then you say, oh God. You understand what I'm saying? Then you hear the dogs outside barking. Woo, woo. Then you say, oh my God. You start doing math in your head the whole night. And the mathematics, by the time you, you, you finish with the calculator, you're in negative. <laughs> Tell somebody, late righteousness have its work in you. Do you know what it means to walk when you're not worried? Do you know what it means to sleep when you're not worried? Do you know what it means to, to, to live and, and there's nothing shaking you? Yes, the landlord is on your door. Yes, the money is not coming through. Yes, you don't have a job yet, but you are at peace. Passing all understanding. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you find a man who is worried, who thinks and gets worried, they even start typing worried messages. You know, apostle, comma, I'm worried. Kst, kst, kst. Righteousness of faith. It's not yet a revelation. Praise the Lord. Nothing moves me. 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 I don't care what the doctor said. Nothing moves you. In the name of nothing. 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 Tell nobody nothing. 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 Eh, you don't get it. 
I want to you see I'm talking to somebody's spirit. I want you to seek in you. Nothing should threaten you. Whether they fired you last week, that's okay. Peace. And the assurance. Paul said. For the light afflictions. Cancer stage four. Light afflictions. HIV. Light afflictions. Lost everything. Light affliction. Comma. Which is but for a moment. Comma. It worketh for us. A exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Next verse. While we look not at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <laughs> For which cause we faint not. That's why we don't faint. Babu Gaba Kumusigo na no nyomla na sigalanga saba. Akasaja ne kamu fira na surga mu nyuba gariaka. Na sigalanga saba. You don't understand what I'm saying. Ne babu fuma ne babu fu elana sigalanga no. I know that my redeemer liveth. That is faith. That is faith. There are people here, if they start telling you their story, they've really been beaten. But after every beating, they just shrug it off and say, Greater is he which is in me than the devil which is in the world. They went to the doctor. A doctor gave them the worst news possible. They became sad for two days. The third day the righteousness of faith came out of them. And told them, but no. You will leave, woman. You will leave. 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 Tell your neighbor that you know Jakuti Taho. Let me translate it. Even this too shall pass. It is for a moment. I don't care how bad it is. It is for a moment. One day they will check your blood and your HIV negative. One day they will check your bank account and your lending to nations. This is temporal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Blessed in the country. Say yeah. Blessed in the country. Blessed in the city. Blessed going in. Blessed going out. In everything you're doing, you're blessed. Hey. 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 Yeah. think we are just shouting. No. We are not shouting. There is something we are seeing in the spirit. And every time we see it, we see the end of the devil. And we say, Nuribaruti. Hey! Tell somebody about it. It will be a day like this. And they are looking at you. And they can't believe you were that woman. And they can't believe that you were that man. It will be one day. One day. One day. Tell somebody one day. One day.
I believe it. If you're a parent and you have children and you're going through a financial crisis, always talk to them. Darling, this is temporal. Buja kucha. Obwa febucha. Obwa febucha. Obwa febucha. There is always a morning for us. Weeping endures. But for a night. But joy comes in the morning. I see days to come. When you're going to be on the platform of the world. As a spectacle for everyone to see. The glory of the Lord. That day is coming. That day is coming. You did not believe God for nothing. You did not seek Him in vain. He said He has not called Jacob to seek Him in vain. My God. Because everything is done. We are just waiting for the manifestation. Men who wait for the manifestation are different from men who, who believe it to happen. It has already happened for me. That is why I feel sorry for your enemies. You will laugh last. I said you will laugh last. I said you will laugh last. Let them laugh now. Let them look at you crazy. They ask you, why do you go to fellowships? Every time you are praying, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying. You are praying, you are praying, you are praying. You You tell them, "Uh uh-uh. Give me time. Give me time. Big ship stands slowly. But when they turn... I believe. Tell somebody I believe. To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Tell somebody I will not die until I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Disease will wait. Listen. He said the work of righteousness shall be peace. It shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness. Assurance. And the next verse says. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. In sure dwellings. And in quiet places. Resting. Quiet resting places. Because we believe. When you're in a sure dwelling, you don't worry about your finances. When you're in a sure dwelling, even if he packs and leaves, you just keep on praising God. Let them walk out. They will come back. Somebody say, I'm in a sure dwelling. I'm in a sure dwelling. I don't worry about my life. Whatever has left can leave. And whoever can leave. If I need them, they will come back again. I know who I am. I know who I believed. I know what he put inside me. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. There is a gentleman I met last year in the United States. And this guy was too broke. And he could not come back even to Uganda. 
God is delivering somebody. He was going through too much. And he came to me and told me, Apostle Grace, I am tired. Big guy like this, he started crying. Tears. Real tears. And I made a very simple prayer. And I said, God, this is your child. This is your son. You know, being in a world where everything has failed. Everything. And somebody is contemplating suicide. They've believed God for years. The guy wakes up every night to pray 3 a.m. He's praying every day. Nothing is working. The righteousness of faith told him through me. I told him by next year, this is going to pass. By next year. I went there this year. He drove me in his car. Big car. Big car. And he told me, Apostle, everything changed I mean everything changed and this time again he's crying but he's not crying because of problems no God is overwhelming him may God overwhelm you to tears in the name of Jesus can I hear a believer raise their voice and say something if you don't have words, speak in tongues, but say something. It shall pass. Brother, it shall pass, honey. It will pass. Come on, say. 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 Who will stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who will stand against the king? No one can, no one will. of faith in Christ that you are more than a conqueror by Christ I declare and I declare in the name of Jesus that in a very short while 
we shall be hearing about you. This time with a testimony, nobody can ignore. A testimony television stations cannot ignore. A testimony YouTube cannot ignore. A testimony the newspapers cannot ignore. A testimony radio stations cannot ignore. A testimony even those who hate you cannot ignore. May God fulfill your days. May He bless you beyond what your enemies are able to bear. In the name of Jesus, I decree upon your life that all things are working together for good. All of these things are working an eternal way of glory. And you're going to come out better than you walked in. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to shout amen like you believe it. you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Make manifest.